And so I, I, like I said, I sometimes can come in here. I know people are not here. I know what's going on in the world. I know people would maybe rather not be around other people. And that's okay. That is your prerogative. That is your choice. And I respect that. But listen, we're here. It's 2022. Okay? And so listen, listen, I hope, yeah, exactly, Paul, you should be excited because I hope and I pray that you have walked into this new year with some fresh vision, with some new ideas, with some new goals specifically pertaining to your relationship with the Lord and spiritually, and you're saying, God, this year is going to be my year. This year, I'm going to be stronger. This year, I'm going to give you more, God. This year, I'm not going to focus on what's going on in the world. I'm not going to allow fear to drive me God I'm gonna allow my faith to drive me God and this year God this year I'm gonna do more for you than I've ever done in any year of my life that should be your confession and your profession church because what I don't want is I do not want us to grow numb and familiar in our spirituality I don't want us to get lazy how many of you ever gotten lazy and I'm talking about in your spiritual walk you ever got a little bit lazy? You ever slacked off? It's pretty easy, right? Yeah. And so listen, listen, this is, why, this is why we're entering into January in a new series called Level Up. Now, this might not be for everybody, but I believe a lot of you, I, be, I believe a lot of you are going to, to gain from this. How many of you want to stay the same? No. How many of you desire to grow? And to change. Well, then how can you change for the better if you're never challenged through the word of God? How can you change if you never allow God's word to challenge you and grow you? I love that, you know, Pastor Kathy and I, we went to go see um, Lydia last Sunday. And she was, uh, she was awake and speaking to us and smiling and uh, and I walked out and I called my wife and I just said, man, I just, I just loved her attitude. I just loved her, her positive, faith-filled, spirit-filled, God-knowing, God-loving, God-serving attitude where she said, I've lived a long life. I've been married for 60 years. Two years, I, I have a beautiful family. I've served the Lord for 43 years. I know where I'm going. I'm not afraid. I'm so excited about where, where I'm going to be. There was no fear inside of her. When I walked into that room, there was just peace. When we walked in, we prayed with her. We just prayed the peace of God continue to be over her life. I just love the fact that she was, was it, it, I would say, the majority of people. I don't know exactly what she was feeling, but I would say the, the majority of people in that moment would probably be so afraid. So afraid that, that their life is going to, to end on this earth, but not Lydia. Lydia knew exactly where she was going. She knew exactly what she was going to hear. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And see, I pray, I pray church, that, 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 that we can get to that place one day where we're not afraid of anything that's going on in the world. We're not afraid of anything that we face, that we embrace the challenges, that we embrace what comes our way because we know that whatever comes our way, God is going to use it to either grow us, to change us, to lift us up, to build us up. So listen, so listen, if we can get to that state of mind, I promise you, you will level up this year. You will level up in your faith. And that is my very first point, if you are taking notes. Number one is embrace the challenges. Embrace the challenges. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, I would say a familiar scripture in this church out of the message translation says this. It says, consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. How many of you had some challenges in 2021? You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you become mature and well-developed. Listen, not deficient in any 
way. So here's what I want to say for you in 2022 is that God has more for you. Now, when I say that, I want to know what do you think of when I say God has more for you? What do you think of in your mind when, when the preacher or the pastor tells you, man, God has more for you in 2022? Is your first thought, is your default way of thinking saying, man, that's it, yes, I received that, Pastor Eric. God does have more for me. He's going to bless me. There's going to be more opportunities. More doors are going to be open. Man, he's just going to work inside my life. He's going to give me more things. I believe that I received that. Now, that's okay, but what if I told you that when I say God has more for you, what that really means is God wants more for you not only does he have more for you but he requires more from you in your life so we walk into 2022 thinking man I want all the things that you have for me God but how come we don't walk into 2022 saying God what is it that you want from me what is it that you're requiring from me how can I serve you more how can I love you more how can I give more how can we help grow each other more God what is it God that you want from me you have to go into 2022 saying, God, I'm embracing the challenges. I'm changing my mindset. I'm going in there thinking to myself, whatever comes my way, I'm going to consider it a sheer gift because I know that whatever, whatever challenges I face, God, you can use them to build me. You can use them to grow me. You can use them to test my faith. And I pray that my faith is proven through the challenges. This is how we have to walk, church. This is how we have to to move we went to uh we went to the central coast for for the new year and we just you know we just wanted to get away for a few days and all of us went my mom my papa joe all of us went and this was the first time uh traveling with um with baby antonio who's a month old already and reagan reagan's three now if you've ever been around reagan she's not only three she's like three kids all three she's like three all of like three people all in one because that's how active this little girl, she don't take naps. She can just go, go, go. Like I would say most toddlers, right? Most three-year-olds can just go. But this little girl can go. And so this was our first time traveling. And we uh, initially wanted to get a minivan. Gosh, I know. You see, that's how I know I'm getting old. Is that I actually consented to wanting to get a minivan. I actually wanted and said, you know what? These are actually pretty nice. They got the double doors that slide open on the side. You don't even. You don't even have. You could push the button and both doors come open, and so you could just easily get inside the van. Plenty of space. But we said we opted not to. We're not. We're not. 100% sure that we're not to, but as of now, we are not going to. We like the minivan. We're just not going to like the minivan's payment. And so we decided that we would choose to remain debt-free and hopefully save up and then go in that route. But, but listen, but that's a sacrifice because we went in my SUV. And my SUV is not super big, and it has four doors, but one of the doors is little. So Putting, um, you know, the car seat in and getting it out and having Reagan in the back and the two older ones, they go with their Mia and Mia takes them everywhere and buys them everything. They just go with their Mia because she's a yes Mia. And I guess that's what grandparents are supposed to be. Am I, am I preaching now? Are grandparents, are grandparents supposed to be yes people? Okay, that's okay. And so here we are, right? Thinking to myself, man, this is great. You know, we're going to get away, um, you know, from all the gunfire. <laughs> and uh, we're going to go to the coast. And we're just going to hang out. We're going to go to the hotel. And we're going to have a good time. Well, little did I know that traveling with an infant and a toddler is a little bit more difficult than I thought. We have, you know, um, diaper blowouts and meltdown moments. And as we were leaving, that's exactly what happened. It took us about 14 hours just to get packed up and get in the car because, you know, infants, they're just, they go to the bathroom like every three seconds. And so you're changing them. We finally got Antonio all packed up. We got to get Regan. Regan has Cheetos all over her face. So I take her to the restroom. Got to get her all cleaned up. Put Regan in the car. Regan is such a joy. You ever been around Regan? Regan will bring you joy if you get around her. And put her in the car. Then we finally get Antonio in the car. And then we finally go to Jenny's to pick up our our burritos, our breakfast burritos, because we needed something. And while we're in there, I'm thinking, man, I walk in there, I'm saying hi to the people that I know, and I grab the burritos. And as I walk out, there is Jess on the side of our little tiny SUV, 
um, in the little crevice behind the seat, the front seat and the back seat, changing Antonio, because Antonio just had a huge diaper blowout. <laughs> I, I know. So right out, right out the gates, we can't get out of the city to get to the coast on time. While we're in the coast, it is a lot more difficult to just go anywhere. Yeah. Right? I mean, you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Now, this is, this is light work cons- compared to some of the challenges that we all face. But, but let me just, can I just say something real quick? That, that throughout those two and a half days that my wife and I, we did a good job. We were a good team. We didn't fight with each other. We didn't blame each other. We didn't get annoyed or angry with one another. We just, we, we, we did our best as much as we were tired, grumpy, and grouchy, even though we were on vacation. We did our best to love one another and to be patient with one another. But how many of us know in here that we're not always like that when we face challenges? We're not always like that when we face challenges. But my encouragement to you is this, is to embrace whatever challenges come your way this year. Embrace them with and through the word of God. That's it. That's it. Take, take, take your eyes off of the world. Take, listen, take your eyes off people and put your eyes on Jesus and continue to understand. You know, the word says this in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Out of This is one of my new favorite translations. It's called the Rad translation. It's the Radiant New Testament. It says, the word of God is alive and active. It's even sharper than any sword that has two edges. It penetrates deep inside us to where the bone meets the joints and where the soul meets the spirit. Until it reveals, hear me out, church, until it reveals the thoughts and intentions of our hearts. Every challenge you face forces you to reveal whether or not you are about this faith life. Everything that you go through, Paul, is going to put your faith to the test. Things that challenge you. And it's going to reveal, Paul, whether you are really about what you say you're about when it comes to your spiritual walk with God. So I'm encouraging you this morning, church, HD church, friends and family. Let me just tell you, I'm encouraging you. Embrace the challenges because they are going to come. But count it all joy when these challenges come because know that God is with you, that your test will, that your faith will be tested. But that's okay because it's going to develop you. It's going to help change you. Number two. Are you guys with me? Number two. Dull knives don't cut. Dull knives don't cut. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 27, 17 out of the Amplified, it says this. It says, as iron sharpens iron... So one man sharpens and influences another through discussion. My, um, I have a couple nephews and um, you guys might know them. They're, they're, my oldest nephew, Ray Anthony, I think he's 22, 21. I'm sorry, Ray. Um, He's in the Air Force. He was stationed out in Japan for a couple years and he, he got some, uh, some new orders, and, and they stationed him in Minot, North Dakota. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to North Dakota, but let me just tell you. And so um, his little brother, Andrew, who's 18, decided to move over with his big brother, Ray. Now, these guys are best friends. They love each other. They take care of each other. I mean, me and my brother... Growing up, we were pretty close, and as adults, uh, we're, we're not as close as I probably would like us to be, but these guys are like best friends. Now, I don't know, how many of you guys had, have or have some siblings that are like your best friend? There you go. Well, these guys are best friends. So Ray and, and, and Andrew are living in Minot, North Dakota, and Ray texts me um, the other day, and he sends me the weather. And the high, the high in Minot, North Dakota was negative 14. But listen, (laughs) it gets better. The high was negative 14, but with the wind chill, it felt like negative 37. I know. 
I'm like, what do you guys do? He's like, I, if we even walk to the car, he said, my chest and my stomach hurts because you can't breathe in that air for so long. He's like, you can't do anything outside. He's like, you just got to get in your car. And he said, we just go to the gym. We go to the store and we come back home. And then I go to work. And I just thought to myself, let me just read something real quick to you. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12, out of the Amplified, it says this. It says, two are better than one because they have more satisfying return for their labor. For if either of them falls down, the one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and does not have another to lift him up. Again, if two lie down together, then they can keep warm. <laughs> That's Ray and Andrew right now. <laughs> I hope they're not lying. I hope they got their own rooms in their own beds. <laughs> if two lie down together, they can keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? And though one can overpower him who is alone, two can resist him. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. So here's what I want to say to you, church. Dull knives don't cut is this, is that the Bible says that the word of God is active. It's alive. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Listen, the word of God um, refers to, 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 to itself as the sword of the spirit. Now listen, you are to be equipped with the word of God. But if you are not doing anything to sharpen your knife, to sharpen your sword, then the only thing you're going to have is a dull sword. And I promise you, going back to the beginning, when challenges come your way, if your sword, which is the word of God that is supposed to be inside of you, if your sword is dull, when the, when the challenges come, when the battles come, and you need to use the word of God to fight, but your spiritual life is dull because you have not been putting any work into it, you have not been sharpening it, then I promise you when the challenges come, you're going to have a hard time. You're going to struggle. You guys, I, I, I could already feel it. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. When you do not stay active in your relationship with God, you know what it's like. The very few things, they just interrupt you. They disrupt you. They annoy you. You backtrack. You go in the wrong direction. Why? Because you have not been sharpening your sword. So as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. So here's my encouragement to you is that you got to figure out and you got to find out who's around you, who's building you up, who's helping you grow. Who are you helping grow? You got to ask yourself and you got to ask the, the you got to tell yourself and you got to take account. Who am I allowing in my life? Are they helping me sharpen my skills? My spiritual skills, are they helping me become the man or the woman of God that God wants me to become? Am I surrounding myself with people that I know that are stronger in their faith than me? Or am I not? Am I, am I isolating? Am I backing away? Am I going in the wrong direction? Am I not doing anything to sharpen my spiritual life? And I'll tell you the truth, church. You can't have a sharp spirit while obeying a dull flesh. It won't work. And so I think of my nephews out there in Minot, North Dakota. They, they, the only people they got out there is each other. And I think of us here at HD Church. See, I don't know what your lives are like personally. I don't know who you surround yourself with. I don't know what you listen to. I don't know the way you speak. And I don't know the way you think. I don't know all the decisions that you make. But I do know this. I do know that if you surround yourself with good people, if you surround yourself with godly people, if you tell yourself this year is going to be the year that I don't backtrack away from God, this year is going to be the year that I show up to Sunday morning service because that's all we got right now is Sunday morning service. But I show up, and when I show up, I show up with the right attitude. I show up telling myself, God, I'm going to receive from you this morning. God, I want my life to change. God, you, you gave me the word of God, and the word of God is the sword of the spirit. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to equip myself with the sword of the spirit. But God, I need it to be sharp. Your word is alive and it's active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. So how am I going to do that, God? I'm going to surround myself with people. What's going on? Is there a men's Bible study? Then I'm I'm showing up to the men's Bible study. I'm going to equip myself. I know it's on a weekday, Paul, and I know that you're tired, Paul, but you got to tell yourself I'm going to be there because I know that if I don't sharpen my sword, the enemy's going to come. And if I have a dull knife, I'm not going to be able to defeat or cut through the enemy. This is the truth. This is the truth, Mac. You know this already. 
You know that if you're not putting the word of God in your life every single day, you know for yourself that it's going to be hard to resist temptation. It's going to be hard to resist negative thoughts. It's going to be hard to resist when people come around you and try to pull you in the wrong direction. Dull knives do not cut. As iron sharpens iron, so one man or so one woman sharpens another. And you're not going to get through 2022 with a dull spiritual life. Man, I'm shouting and I'm preaching, but I'm trying to get your attention. This is the truth. This is the truth, James. You've been at this for a long time, but you and I both know just because you've been at this for a long time doesn't mean that you can just let up. Just because you've been here for 20 or 30 years doesn't give you the right to say, well, I have seniority and I'm, I've already made it. I've already arrived. No, we know that already. We know it doesn't work that way. Right, Lise? Right, Frank Galvin? Right, Liz? We know we got to change and we got to grow. And we know that, that we know that there's seasons in our lives where we do slack off. We know there's seasons in our life where we do get hurt where we do get offended, where things are go not going the way we would like them to go. We know there's seasons in our lives where our families are disrupted and there's problems and there's situations. We know there's seasons in our lives where our marriages are attacked, our families are attacked, our children are attacked. But guess what, mom and dad? Guess what, husband and wife? It's your job to stay strong. It's your job to lead your home. It's your job to say, but as for me, as for me and my house, we're going to continue to serve the Lord. It's your job to say, look, I know what's going on in the world right now. I know it's scary. I know there's all kinds of things going on, all kinds of different variants popping out every few months. I know that it's scary, but my faith is going to remain in my King of Kings and in my Lord of Lords. I'm going to trust in God with all my heart. I'm going to continue to sharpen my sword. So I'll just tell you right now, the best way to sharpen your sword is to get in and through the word of God. Man, I tell you, you show up here, you're intentional about it. I'm growing in my faith. What did we say last week? I, I, I do not want to just have a form of godliness and deny the power of God. I don't want to just look godly. Man, I want to be godly. And this is not just for me, right? This is not for me. This is because I'm a light. And my light has to shine. My light has to shine wherever I go. When I go to work, I want to be prepared, right? So, so imagine, church, you go... Imagine you go to work and imagine that you, your, your, your spiritual life, the sword of the spirit that is a part of, of who you are, which is the word of God. But imagine that it's dull. Imagine that there's been no work put in at all. Imagine no, no scripture has been put to memory. Imagine there's no, been no prayer. Imagine that in your life. So imagine you go to work. You tell me what kind of light is going to shine when, you're, when your sword is dull. Now you tell me, when you're allowing all the world and all the cares and all the anxiety to pile up on your life, you tell me, how easy is it going to be for God to use you when you've allowed all those things to pile up on you, when you have not been putting in the work for yourself to resist the enemy and let him flee and allow your faith to grow in Christ? You tell me, is it going to be easy to be able to be used by God in those moments? Absolutely not. But tell me this, if you've been putting in the work, you've been going to God, you've been building up your spiritual life, you've been going to the word of God, you've been praying for others, you've been praying for yourself, you've been having conversations. The Bible says, as iron sharpens iron out of the apple, so one man sharpens and influences another through discussion. You've been influencing others through the discussion of your faith. That's how you build up your faith. As we embrace the challenges, we sharpen our sword. So I just pray for my nephews because they're from the Central Valley and they've never been in any type of weather like that. And so, but listen, but listen, I'm glad they're together. Because two are better than one. And listen, church, you were not created to do this life on your own. Specifically, this spiritual life. You were not created to isolate and run away and hide and try to do things on your own. You're, you, you, we are here for one another. And, and my prayer is this. My prayer is this, is that we can go to one another and we can ask for help. And not be embarrassed. We can go to one another and tell each other maybe some of the things that have gone on in our lives where, we're, where we are struggling without fear of being judged. Now, now hear, let me, hear me out here. 
without fear of being judged, but being okay with being corrected. Being okay with being pulled back into the fold because that's what I desire with all my heart is that we continue to move in the direction that God wants us to. And my last point, church. Are you guys receiving this? Number three is this, obedience. Obedience. Offense or opportunity, that is a question. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, 8 out of the Amplified, it says, by faith, Abraham, listen, by faith, Abraham, when he was called by God, he obeyed by going to a place which he was to receive as an inheritance. Listen, and he went not knowing where he was going. You know, throughout all the scripture, um, the Bible just speaks of so many people that just trusted God at his word. Now, I know that's not always easy for us to do. And Abraham was one of those men where, where God just took him and and. And, and helped him and built him up and lifted him up. And God blessed him. And God promised Abraham a son by the name of Isaac. When him and his wife were, were way past the age of having a child, God had promised them that child. And it was over 20 years that it took for them to ever have that child. But when they did, you guys might know the story. Sounds crazy, and it is crazy. But as Abraham is, is there in this moment with his son Isaac, God asks of Abraham to bring Isaac as a sacrifice. Now, this is wild, okay? This is wild. Now, if you know the story, Abraham does what God says. He obeys him. And, and I can imagine what he's feeling in that moment. Um, he's probably afraid. He loves his son, but he trusted God. And before anything ever went wrong, the angel of the Lord stopped him, and God was pleased with Abraham because, God, because Abraham obeyed God. And the Bible says, and the Bible continues to go on to talk about how Abraham had faith in God. And he tells him this. He says that he obeyed, he obeyed God by going to a place which was, he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went, listen, not knowing where he was going. So Abraham trusted God at his word. Now, I know this is not easy at all. And, and can I say something um, for us as a church? I feel, I feel like. I wish I could tell you exactly what 2022 is going to look like. But I'm going to just be honest with you. I don't know. I don't know. I pray and I hope that we can, that there can be a switch and a turn and things can get better. I really do for all of us. But you know what I've decided to do is I've decided to take that part of the scripture where he says, and he went, not knowing where he was going, and saying the same thing. God, I don't know exactly what's going to happen this year. I don't even know exactly where we are going as a church in 2022. But you know what, God? I trust you. I trust you, and I believe you, because I know that you're with me. I know that you've been with me, and I know that I can recall all the times that you've been with me. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 and 17, out of the Amplified, it says, All scripture is God-breathed, given by divine inspiration, and is profitable for instruction, for conviction of sin, for correction of error and restoration to obedience, for training in righteousness, learning to live in conformity to God's will, both publicly and privately, behaving honorably with personal integrity and moral courage so that the man of God may be complete and proficient, outfitted and thoroughly equipped for every good work. So here's what I will tell you as we close. Is that at some point in your life, the word of God is going to offend you. If the word of God has not offended you yet, just keep reading. Yeah, it's just the truth. We are, listen, we already know, we already know that, that we can be offended in our own lives personally. We know that. But you keep reading the word of God and you're going to see real quick that there's going to be things that God requires of you that you're not going to like. Listen, last week we talked about it. We said it. We said, the Bible calls us to forgive. 
right? 490 times a day, 70 times 7, Jesus told, told the disciples, this is how much you need to forgive. And I think Jesus knew what we are going to go through as human beings when it comes to dealing with one another. Amen. People are going to disappoint us. People are going to let us down. People are going to hurt us and wrong us. But Jesus said, yet you're sp still supposed to forgive them. But he goes on, the, the scripture goes on to tell us that it goes deeper than that, right? To, to, to bless and pray for your enemies. To bless and uh, to ask God to bless those that despitefully use you. So the craziest thing about this when you read this is that, God, you're, you're, you're telling me to pray for someone that has hurt me or wronged me or offended me and not only pray for them, God, but you want me to pray and you want me to ask you to bless them. So, see, I'm already offended that God would ask me to do that. I'm Okay, first of all, I'm already offended at the person that upset me. Now I'm offended at the word of God for telling me that I need to pray for the person that offended me. Do you get what I'm saying? But listen, but you can, you can look at the word of God two ways, and this is how obedience works. You can look at it through the eyes of offense, or you could look at it through the eyes of opportunity. Because I'll tell you what, if you keep going to offense and you keep saying God I don't know if I can do that God I don't really like that God I don't really want to do that God let me just pick and choose the things that I want to pull from your word and that's how I will live my life man years ago I think maybe 10 years ago I, I, I talked about uh, a build a Jesus theology kind of like build a bear that we go in and we take the word of God and we pull whatever we want out and we build our we build our perfect Jesus for our lives and we say, this is the Jesus that I want to take with me. Man, all the things, God, that you said that you, that you have for me, not so much that you want from me, but all that you have for me, that's what I want. I don't really like the part where you're telling me that I need to, to, to forgive, that I need to pray, that I need to go to my brother and sister and ask for forgiveness or have a conversation or sharpen my sword. I don't really like that part, God, so I'm going to keep that out. But, man, the part that you said that you're with me, that you're never going to leave me, that you're never going to forsake me, God, the part that you said that you'll bring me peace, that you'll comfort me in my time of need, that you'll supply my needs according to your riches and glory, those, that's the Jesus that I want to hold on to, the Jesus that's challenging me, the one that offends me, that's the one I'm going to reject. That's how obedience works. You see, Abraham could have been really upset with God when he asked him to sacrifice Isaac, but instead he trusted God. He could have been really upset with God when God did not tell him exactly where he was going, but yet he trusted God not knowing where he was going. He could have been offended by that, but instead Abraham looked at this as an opportunity to please God. See, everything that comes your way through the word of God, you have to say, God, this is an opportunity that you're giving me to grow stronger in my faith. This is an opportunity you're giving me to take some of my bad habits away, to to put some of the stuff that I've been holding on to for a really long time, God, to kick that to the side and say, God, I choose you. God, I choose you. Obedience, offense, or opportunity. And this is my prayer for us, church, this year, is that we go to the word of God and we say, God, I want to obey you no matter what. And I'm not going to be upset about it. I'm not going to get offended about it. But instead, God, I'm going to look at this as an opportunity for you that the scripture that you've given, it's divine inspiration. It's profitable for instruction, for conviction of sin, for correction of error and restoration to obedience. Listen, for training in righteousness, learning to live in conformity to God's will, both publicly and private, privately, behaving honorably with personal integrity and moral courage so that the man or listen, the man or woman of God may be complete and proficient outfitted and thoroughly equipped for every good work. The word of God either brings offense or opportunity, but listen, my brother and sister, it's up for you to choose. You choose. You see, every time the word of God comes into my life and I see things that I don't really agree with at that moment, but I know that it's the word of God. You see, the word of God should always trump the word of you. Let me say that again. The word of God should always trump the word of you. When it calls you to be humble and to not be full of pride, when it calls you to, 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 to build courage, to be bold, to not be afraid, when it calls you to forgive, when you don't want to forgive, 
when you don't want to pray, when you don't want to ask God to bless that person, but yet the word of God is calling you to that and requiring it from you. The word of God should always trump the word of you. We embrace the challenges that are going to come our way in and through the word of God. Dull knives don't cut, Paul. Keep your sword sharp. Your store, your, if your sword stays sharp, Mackie, I promise you, no matter what the enemy brings your way, because God is with you and because the word of God is inside of you, you will always be able to overcome. And as long as you look at the word of God as an opportunity, as long as you keep that in your mind, as you're reading and saying, God, I want to obey your word. These are opportunities that you're giving me to grow in you, to be more like you. I promise you, then yes, everything that God has for you, all that God has for you, it will come to fruition. But let me just say this, church, this year for some of you. You better, you better check and ask yourself, God, what do you want from me? How much... What is it, God, that you want me to do this year? Is it to serve? Is it to give? What is it, God? How can I help? How can I be a part? Those are the opportunities for obedience for God to show up in your life, church. Would you stand with me? So what I did was is I took, um, I actually took week two of this series and I preached it in week one. It was a little bit of strategy. I think uh, we'll see if it works out next week. So next week will actually be week one. It's confusing. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Pray for Ray and Andrew. They're in negative 37 degree weather. Amen. You guys all right? Yes. Did you receive the word of God? Yes. Do you, listen, 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 do you, do you understand that the word of God teaches us to live different from the way our mind thinks? Do we get that? Like it doesn't make, it doesn't make a lot of sense sometimes. And that's why I say the things that I say, because the word of God goes opposite from the world. It's almost upside down. Right? It's in reverse. When we, things like, just like I think, for, for me the easiest thing, because I know we all go through it, is, is being upset or hurt um, when someone does something to us wrong. Right? And then Jesus comes in and tells you that not only do you need to forgive them, right? But you need to ask God to help them and bless them. That, that, that's, not, that's not the way the world works. So if you're here and you're listening to this and it's challenging you, then it, that's a good thing Amen. because that's what you need in your life. You need to be challenged because the only way you're going to grow is if you're challenged, right. if you're pushed as iron sharpens iron. So does one man or woman sharpen another. This is what we need. The word of God is what? It's alive and it's active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It, 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 it brings out, it reveals the truth of who we really are. And so I pray in 2022 that we become more like Jesus, that we love one another better, that we grow with one another, that we're accountable to one another, and we get, to, we get back to good places. And listen, and we level up. Amen. We level up. See, I don't know about you, but I want to go, whatever that level is for me, I want to go to that next level. I want God to get glorified in my life, and I want people, like Pastor Kathy said, people that are hurting should be filling these, filling these seats up and should be hearing the gospel of Jesus and how God loves them so much. Come on, church. Come on, church. Some of you need to get your fire back. Some of you need to reignite. I can feel it. When I walk in this place, I can feel it. Some of us are numb. We're a little too familiar. Some of us are a little bit too dull. I can feel it. And, and I, wish, I wish there was something that I could do for you, but I know that I can't. All I can do is deliver the word of God, and it's only up to you to reignite and kindle the fire of God that's been inside of you. That's it. 
That's all I can do. I can't, I, I can't, you got, just the way you can't come with me, home with me, and, 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 man, I wish, I wish someone could come with me wherever I went and say, hey, don't do that, hey, don't think like that, hey, don't say that, right? Yeah. See, you're saying, we're saying yes, but you have someone, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But if you're, if you're dull, let me just say something, if you're dull, then all you'll do is suppress the Holy Spirit, right. and the Holy Spirit will never speak to you when he needs to. Because you've never been speaking to him. We, we better pray. Let's bow our heads, church. Father, I thank you, Lord, and I, and I praise you, God, and I ask right now that you help each and every one of us, God. I know all of us in here need help. I know we all struggle, all of us, including myself, Lord. And so I pray, Lord, that your hand be upon us, that your word ministers to us, in us, and through us, God. And I pray that we do, that we embrace challenges, that we don't run away from them, God, but we know that these are opportunities that you're going to use, God, to help us, to grow us, to change us, God. I pray that we keep our spiritual sword sharp, our spirit man or woman sharp through the word of God. Sharpen us, God. Help us. Change us, God. And I just pray, God, that we, we look at your word. And when we look to obey, God, we see moments of opportunity. And we don't get upset about it. We don't get angry about it. When you ask certain things of us, God, this year, when you ask more of us, God, that we don't, that we don't get mad about it, but we say, God, I love you so much. You've done so much in my life. You've saved me. You've helped me. You've blessed me. You've walked with me through some of the most difficult seasons of my life, God. So whatever it is you want from me, God, I desire to obey you, God. I want to give you my whole life. I'm a vessel, God. And maybe you've been emptied out. Well, then I'm asking right now, God, that you fill us back up. That you fill us up, God. And so I just thank you, Lord, that we come into this year, that we can reignite, we can rekindle the fire. If it's gone out or, or our flame is low, Lord, help us build that back up. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen.